This man is 29 years old. Say no to Lord Anum. Hello, human people, and welcome to Queerly Red, where we're looking at something actually queer for once. Because this time we're talking about HBO Max's Our Flag Means Death, also known as that gay pirate show. And specifically, we're talking about how space is presented on the show. So let's get started and beware spoilers ahead. It's pretty obvious that in a show about pirates, the sea would be a pretty big fixture of space. Which is great for me, because there is some theory or space specifically about the sea. For example, French philosopher Gilles Deleuze and psychoanalyst Félix Guattari, in their discussion about smooth and strided space, call sea smooth space par excellence. So two terms to introduce here. According to Deleuze and Guattari, smooth space or nomadic space is amorphous, non-formal space, where the journey becomes more important than the points, the ends and beginnings, and the dwelling is subordinated to the journey. Inside space conforms to outside space, tent, igloo, bow. Strided space, in contrast, is all about the points, the A's and the B's, and the space is structured and constructed for the purpose of getting to those points. Basically, strided space is more measured, more defined, especially by the state, according to Deleuze and Guattari. In strided space, the world is a series of points, with numerically measured lines in between. In smooth space, the line takes precedent, and it's more of a direction or trajectory. Something I want to make clear is that, even though C is often thought of as smooth, land is not inherently strided in real life, nor is it always on the show. But it helps to generalize at this point for me to make a point. Because what I want to claim in this video is that, generally speaking, our flag means death assigns the C, the smooth space, as queer space. Now, right off the bat, I don't mainly mean queer in the sense of sexuality or gender, but non-normative. Land, on the other hand, is the normative space, the space of social obligation and, even if a bit vaguely, government and the state. On the show, the pirates uh, almost always have some kind of conflict with the ways of the land. And no, not just land links. The crew of the Revenge doesn't really know what they are supposed to do on land. Or more commonly, the representatives of land-based governments are trying to put heavy metals into their physical being. They even have an animosity with their own state of sorts, the Republic of Pirates. Is that a gift shop? And Republic is kind of great for my analysis because it shows how the cinematography of the show reinforces the ideas of smooth and strided space. In a lot of strided spaces, especially on land, the show uses sets that are very tight and the shots can't get too much depth. In contrast, on the sea, there is a lot more sense of space and depth. Usually, it's pretty clear sometimes that they're on a small set. And yeah, these are mainly because budget stuff, you know, my video. But the Republic also has what I call simulated smoothness, or being touristy, as normal people call it. Which basically means that people from differently strided spaces can come and feel like they are nomads, exploring a smooth space, although they are usually just going through prescribed points. In these examples, we see that the spaces on land are more controlled by the state consumerism and uh, temporal habits that just don't fit in with the seafaring pirate way of life. Or, well, you know, the colonized spaces, at least. But strided and smooth spaces don't just exist on a macro level, they also shape the people in them. So obviously, we gotta talk about the co-captains. 
it's like the, the focus of the show or something. It has steep and body strided and smooth spaces, kinda. It is the very image of a nomad, the inhabitant of smooth space, but also kinda doesn't want to be anymore and desires at least the affect of the middle class of strided space. Steed, on the other hand, comes from a sedentary life and desires the seeming adventures of nomadic space. And you know, certain people in that space. But Steed also brings us to strided space with him. For example, his ship is divided into points by making rooms have a very specific purpose that only really makes sense to him. And although Ed wants some of the effects of strided space, he can't stand the obtuse rules and structure of it. From the viewpoint of space, it's pretty obvious that Ed and Steed are representatives of smooth and strided space, respectively. But they also complicate them, because as Steed manages to shed the vestige of strided space of land, it goes back to his old life, but not just as a nomad, but a normative nomad. Although the sea is kind of the smooth amorphous space where Steed goes to discover his queerness, it's also where Ed has his own normative life and space-time. At sea, there's a very specific way he needs to be, a way he doesn't recognize as his own anymore. And here we come to an important conclusion. Just like what is considered the strided and smooth space is subjective, the same goes for what is considered queer space. Although we have an idea what is and what is assigned as queer space, that might not be true for everybody. But what happens when actual land and sea meet? In our flag means death, some of the most important emotional crises happen at the beach, the place where land and sea meet. And some people learn the meaning of vacation. <laughs> But it's also where Steed and Ed's relationship has some of its most important moments. It's where they have their first kiss, after all. But it's also where they clash over different aspects of each other. I don't like to drink till I puke or get pelted with coconuts. Because the beach is where land and sea meet, it represents Ed and Steed's crises, both good and bad. The beach is a border space between their two worlds that allows them to negotiate a new kind of existence. For example, it's where Steed sheds the last remnants of his middle-class sedentary life and embraces the life of a nomad. And it's also a place where a new kind of life was supposed to start, but doesn't. And that ends my analysis of space in Our Flag Means Death. Hope it wasn't too incoherent. Because sadly, I didn't have time to read as many sources as I had wanted to. But you can find what I did read and what I wanted to read down in the description. And while you're down there, consider commenting and liking the video, and subscribe so that you don't miss the video on the second season. Unless, you know, this is the darkest timeline and the show gets cancelled. Either way, I'll see you in the next video.